have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 8. I want to shout out while you're turning there to Miss Linda Newman this morning. Linda is up at Gwinnett Medical. Hey, Linda, she's watching on the internet, and uh, we're praying for you. God's going to touch her. She's got a little surgery going on this week, triple bypass. How's that for a little surgery this week? And uh, in fact, let's pray right now. Can we do that? Linda, we're praying for you right now, sweetie. All right, Lord, we love you so much, and I thank you for Linda Newman. She's a, just a priceless person, and we, we love her so much, and I know you love her way more than we do even. And I pray, God, that your hands will be all upon her and touch her and heal her today. Be with her. Guide the hands of the physicians as they go through this process. And we thank you for a miraculous report at the end of this procedure. And we thank you for that in advance. And everybody said, amen. All right. I want to talk to you today on how to hear God speak, man. Have you ever wanted to hear God speak to you? I mean, come on. There's nothing like having God talk to you. And uh, it's, uh, it's frustrating at times for a lot of us because we don't know. Did I say John chapter 8? Luke. Okay. I don't know where that came from. That just hit me. I'm ADD, I guess. Luke chapter 8. But, uh, you know, we get frustrated sometimes. God, are you ever going to talk to me? You ever heard somebody run around and say, God told me this, God told me that, God told me and You're like, shut up, man. God don't tell me nothing. You ever feel that way? I mean, sometimes that's just the way it is. We don't know, God, are you really speaking to me? How come you're talking to everybody else, but you don't talk to me? Well, I want you to understand today, God wants to talk to you. And I know he wants to talk to you as much as you want him to talk to you. And uh, he wants to have a relationship. God never intended to talk to somebody else about you. That's what we do as people. We talk to everybody else about everybody else. God don't play that game. God wants to talk to you. Y'all with me? He wants to connect with you. And I'm grateful for someone to come up to me and say, well, you know, God told me something about you. I'm glad to hear that. But I want you to know that's secondary because God wants to talk directly to me. And he wants to connect with me and he wants to connect with you. But how do we hear God speak? And there's a parable in Luke chapter 8 that actually helps us understand what it takes to hear God speak. Because I, I tell you, I fully believe God is speaking to us all the time. The problem is we're just not always tuned in. You know what I'm talking about? Remember years ago, the old CB radio, someone come on and, hey, y'all got your ears on? You remember some of that, th th those days? All the kids are like, CB what? But, you know, but they got, they, you know, you got your ears on. How are you tuned in? I mean, have you ever tried to listen to a radio station where it's all staticky and then all of a sudden you lose it all together? You're like, man, that was a good station, right? And it's gone. Well, you know, that's the way we are sometimes. We're not tuned into God. God's station's always cooking 24-7 for you. And it, 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 he's always talking to us. He always wants to lead us and guide us. But reception is not always automatic. All right? You've got to understand that. Reception is not always automatic. We have to listen up. And Jesus said in Luke chapter 8, Verse 8, the latter part of that verse, he said something really good. He said, he called out to him, he said, he who has ears, let him hear. I mean, y'all know that, that's part of what God intended when you had ears, was that you would use them to listen, right? As a matter of fact, there, there's something really deep and profound. This is going to blow you away. You're going to think I'm like Joel Osteen when I tell you this. Are you ready? God gave you two ears and one mouth. Guess what? He wants you to listen twice as much as you talk. Amen. You see that? Isn't that pretty cool? I'd like Joel. If I had wavy hair and skinny, that'd be him. But look, I'm telling you, that's what he said. He, said. he wants you to listen. He wants you to listen. And he's talking. He said, those who have ears, let him hear. But he told the story. He tells a story in Luke chapter 8 that helps us out. He said there's really four reasons, if you will, why we don't hear from God. And there's four things that we can really do if we want to hear from God to where we can hear. And he tells the story of a farmer who is out. And he goes out to sow seed. And he scatters it over Four different kinds of soil. Some of y'all have read this before. And in the story, we know that God is symbolic of the, of the farmer. We know the seed is the word of God, and the soil is our mind. It's our mind. It's how we process things. There are four different kinds of soil, and there are four different kinds of attitudes that we kind of cop up at times with God, or four kinds of uh, attitudes that I can have toward his word. And, and listen, these aren't individual people things here. The facts are these responses are true to all of us when we look at these things at different moments in our life. Sometimes we're open to God. Sometimes we're close to God. Sometimes we're in too big of a hurry for God. And then other times, you know, we're, you know, we're just really wide open to hearing everything that God says. But I want to give you four things to write down today to help you because if there's a benefit you could take home today is this. God wants to talk to you. 
Do you have to be in a special club? Do you have to be a member of the church? Listen, I want everybody to join the Christ Church. I think you ought to join. If you're not a member, I want you to sign up today. I want you to be a part of our fellowship next week. But you know what? You don't have to join the church for God to talk to you. He wants to talk to you today right where you are. All right, you say, well, I'm not worthy. Well, okay, who is? Can I tell you, as dirty as you think you are, there's nobody any cleaner <laughs> Can I tell you, we all the same folks, right? We all struggle. God wants to talk to us. And that's why there's four things that I must do and you must do if you really want God to talk to you. And I want you to write them down. Number one, I must cultivate an open mind. And we're going to use this parable today as the, as the learning curve for this today. I must cultivate an open mind. Listen, God, the first step is, is God, I want to hear you speak. I have to be open to it. I have to open up. That's why just a moment ago, and I like to do this a lot at the end of our worship sets, I like to try to lead us as a congregation. Hey, you just tell God you love him. You just talk to God for yourself. You invite God to come in and minister to you. You tell him you got permission to do something in your life. That's being open to God. I want you to open up up so that you can receive from God because if, you, if you're not open, you're not going to receive from him, right? And the very first part of, 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 of hearing from God is that I've got to cultivate an open mind. I've said, God, I'm eager. I'm ready. I'm, I want to hear from you. But I want you to see this fact. Many people never hear God speak because they're closed to the possibility of it. You've already ruled it out maybe. God's never going to speak to me. Maybe you've ruled it out. There's no way God's going to talk to me. I know me, and I know God knows me. Why would he want to talk to me? Listen, God's not sitting in heaven today pouting because you've done something stupid. Understand that. He's not pouting today because of what you put on Facebook. He's not pouting today because of your lifestyle. He's not pouting. He's not sitting there saying, I'm not going to talk to you now because I'm just mad at you. God don't play that way. God's wanting you to change your ways, man. He said, I went to the cross for you that you might have every opportunity to get things straight so that we can be in eternity forever. He's not here to beat you over the head today. He says, I want to love on you. I want to embrace you. And then hopefully together as we walk together in relationship, then there'll be some fruit in your life. But sometimes we just feel like, man, there's no way. Have you ever invited someone to church and they said, man, if I came to church with you, the roof will cave in. You ever had somebody say that? I like to get them to come on because if we ever have a leaky roof, that's how God will fix it. We got insurance. <laughs> but it never has happened yet. So see, you're not as bad as you might think. But see, here's what the Bible says. They, they kind of get disappointed. But look in verse 5 of Luke chapter 8. It says this. It said, some seed fell along the path and it was trampled and the birds ate it up. Now, what does that mean? If you look at verse 12, you'll see the, the meaning of what that meant. In verse 12, it says, those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes along and takes away the word from their hearts so they cannot be, believe and be saved. The farmer walks out, and if you, you know, I'm, I'm not like a Mr. Camper, as you could tell by the video, and I'm not a big farmer, green thumb, nothing. In fact, if it could be killed, I, I'm probably going to kill it. But I do know enough about it that when you go into a garden and you go, there, there's, a walk, there's a pathway to walk, and then you have the fruit or the, or the harvest. And the farmer would walk down that path, and he would throw his seed out. And where does that seed fall? He just chunks the seed. Well, you know, it falls everywhere. A lot of it falls in the path. A lot of it falls in the field where it's going to grow up. The problem is the seed that fell in the path, well, that, that seed gets kind of ground in. Everybody's walking on it. Everybody's walking up and down. You go up to the strawberry fields up here. You can see it. Some of y'all already been up here picking some strawberries. Well, you walk in a path, and that path is a hard path, and then you can pick up your strawberries from one side to the other. That's where the seed, where the strawberries are, was able to grow and take root and do something great. But in that path, you're not going to see a whole lot of strawberries pop up, are you? Because it's hard ground. And that's what happens here in, in the cultivating the open mind. open mind. Jesus says the hardened path represents the closed mind. The closed mind says, I'm not open to anything new. I'm not open to what God might say. You know what? I just don't want to hear it. And listen, guess who can have a closed mind? Anybody here today? Anybody? You could, listen, I've met people that have been in church their whole life that's got a closed mind. Just because you've gone to church their whole life doesn't mean your mind is open. There's a lot of closed-minded people that sit in the house of God week in and week out. Many people 
are unwilling to listen, and they reject the whole idea that God's going to speak to them. Now, what makes us, you ever thought about what makes us have a closed mind? What makes us so defensive, or what gives us that defensive mind? What closes our mind? I want you to write these down. First of all, number one, fear will do it. Fear will cause you to close your mind. I want you to think about this. We're afraid sometimes of what God might say. Are you afraid? Are you afraid of what God might say? Listen, I may have to change my lifestyle if I listen to God. You ever thought about that? Maybe you enjoy your lifestyle today of how you live and how you roll in life and you enjoy that. Maybe if you listen to God, God might tell you you've got to give something up. Maybe God's going to work on some of those rough edges in you. Maybe God's going to tell you some things have to change and you might be a little bit afraid of how your lifestyle might change or how your fun or your pleasure or all of these, your freedom, all of these things. Well, wait a minute. What if God makes you a fanatic? I mean, come on. What if God says, get you a billboard and stand on the street corner and, you know, and wave and throw things at cars, you know? I mean, what, what if God, you, you start frothing at the mouth and you're a crazy Christian, right? You see those kind of people out there? What if God, oh, I don't want God to tell me to do that, right? What if God tells me to give all my money away to the poor? Come on, I don't want to hear that. So fear sometimes causes us to have a closed mind. Pride is another one, though. Pride is an area that we have to deal with because, listen, that's where we get to a place where we say, I don't need God. I really don't need God. Everything's okay. Listen, I've run my business for 20 years. I can run it for 20 more. I've managed my family for this long, and I can manage it a little bit more. I really don't need God. Well, what is God going to possibly tell me? Maybe God's going to tell me something that challenges my manhood as the father and priest of my home. Maybe God's going to show me something that challenges my authority on earth, right? So pride comes in, and we have a hard time with that one. But then there's another one that comes in, and that's bitterness. Bitterness is another reason why we have a hard time keeping an open mind. Because, you know, bitterness, listen, life in life, we go through pains, do we not? Every person here today goes through pains. We go through trauma. We go through issues. And if it, we're not careful, the hurts that we experience can make us bitter, right? And you get really bitter. I, I've gotten really bitter. And I mean, I've had some issues in, of bitterness that I've had to deal with. And I know that you know what they feel like. But guess what bitterness will do? Bitterness will make you have a hardened heart. Bitter, bitterness will turn you off to the things of God. Bitterness is going to close you down. Bitterness is going to steal your joy and your future. Did you know that? Some of y'all today, you are hanging on with a thread because your heart is so bitter. And God's saying, look, if you ever want to go and have the abundant life I've got for you, you got to cut off this bitterness. I'm just telling you, it's killing you. It's like that Georgia kudzu grows up over cars and barns and everything else. That's what bitterness has done. And it'll suck the life out of you. And we get closed-minded because of bitterness. It makes our hearts hard and we can't hear what it is that God wants to say. And listen, I want you to think about this. Did you know, according to the statisticians, that the number one reason people don't like to go to church anymore is because they've been burned by another Christian? Did you know that? Think about that. They've been burned by a pastor. They've been burned by leaders. They've been burned by Christians. They, they're bitter today. Listen, I can't tell you. I, I know that everybody in here, I, I, I bet a vast majority of people in this church have been hurt by someone else somewhere on the line. It, it's, it's inevitable. It happens everywhere. In fact, you know what happens a lot of times? We get into a church family, and we get in, and we try to get cooking along, and everybody's doing well. Then something will happen. We'll get hurt. And then you know what we do? We want to drift away and sort of kind of just fill in the back rows of a big church somewhere. You ever done that? I mean, I've done that. I'm talking from experience. I just want to go where nobody knows my name. You know what I'm talking about? I don't want to go to Cheers. I want to go where nobody knows my name. I want to sit back in the back. I don't want you to look at me, talk to me, or nothing. I don't want to shake hands. I don't want to tithe. I don't want to listen. I don't want to say amen. I don't want to do nothing. I want to mark my time and just be here because I don't like Christians. You ever say that before? I still have a problem. Sometimes this day I'll see some you know, dingbat driving down 78 with a fish sticker on their back of their car, and they look like the devil themselves. They're cussing, throwing birds up, and everything else, you know, smoking seven-foot-long cigars. I'm like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Uh, you know, I see some, I'm like, come on. Take that Christian T-shirt off. You're ruining the faith, you know. Come on, somebody, right? And, I mean, that's just the way we are sometimes. Why? Because sometimes Christian people hurt you right? 
And that's what happens sometimes, and bitterness comes in. I, I want to say something. I hope you'll hear me, hear my heart on this. Listen to this. Never, never, never let another person or an event destroy your relationship with Christ. Can I tell you how important that is? Never, 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 never let it happen. You say, well, so-and-so hurt me. They were a leader. So-and-so hurt me. They were a, a good person in the church. So-and-so hurt me. They, they did something. My best friend hurt me in the church. You know what? Get over it and let it go and know that God's going to deal with them at some point. You hear me? He'll deal with it. God's keeping the score. Did you know that? He's keeping a tally. And he's going to take care of it all. And you mark my words and you listen. I'm speaking prophetically, all right? not pathetically, prophetically. There's a difference. I'm telling you right now, God will have the last word with all these people out there. You just wait. You just wait. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. The writing is already on the wall, folks. I'm telling you, you don't have to worry about it. It's going to go down like a 747. Boom, it's done. You just watch. It's in God's timing, not our timing. That's why you've got to let it go. You have to let it go. It's like a cancer. You have to cut off of your heart and let it go and say, God, I don't understand why all this happened this way, but I am bitter and I'm tired of being bitter. Come on, somebody. You got to let it go and say, God, you take care of it. Okay? It's not your job and it's not my job to take care of it, but I want to, don't you? And when I start to take care of it or try to take care of it, that bitterness just blocks our heart and it become, we become unproductive. James said it this way, James chapter 1 verse 21, he said, look, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word that is planted in you which can save you. Isn't that great? In other words, I got to cultivate an open mind. Jesus says, let down your defenses and realize that God loves you and he wants to speak to you. Isn't that good? I want to hear from God today. If you want to hear from God, God wants to speak to you. But I can tell you, you got to get rid of the fear, the pride, and the bitterness. And I got to open up and I got to cultivate an open mind. But number two, I want you to write this down. I also have to allocate time to listen. I have to allocate time to listen. You know, I have to schedule it. You know, that, that should be easy. We got iPhones, Blackberry, iPads, right? We got everything, computers. We got like 17 computers in our house now, right? Isn't that the way it goes? And I mean, what are we going to do about how do we, listen, all the better to schedule things with, right? I mean, you can schedule time with God. If I'm going to hear from God, I got to schedule some time. I got to get to a place where I can have God speak to me. And you know what? We get in a hurry, don't we? And we're so busy. Look at verse 6 of Luke chapter 8. Jesus went on to tell us in this parable, he said, Other seed fell on, fell on shallow soil with rock beneath, and this seed began to grow, but soon withered and died for a lack of moisture. Now look down in verse 13, you'll get a, a definition or an explanation of this one. It said, Those on the rock are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. Now think about that. Here's what he's trying to tell you. He's saying, look, this is the rocky soil. Now, in Israel, those of you that have ever been there or you know anything about it, I've been there a couple times. I love it. I want to go again. And I was really hoping some of y'all might want to go with me. We might do a little Holy Land thing one of these days. Wouldn't that be fun? I love, man, I love Israel. But if you go to Israel, they have a rocky soil. But, but listen, it's, got, it's covered, if you will. There's a, a thin layer of topsoil across the whole country. And underneath it is a bedrock of limestone. And so what happens is plants will sprout up very quickly in this terrain. But when the summer heat comes in, the sweltering heat comes in, all of a sudden they wither and they die and they fall away. The shallow soil is that person that's dealing with the superficial mind. They're, they're impulsive people reacting emotionally. They get excited, but they never let it sink in. Let me put it in a language you can understand. They shout real loud on Sunday, but they fizz on Monday. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Amen. They like them little firecrackers. What are they, you know, they spin around like a sparkler, a sparkler. You ever lit a sparkler up on July 4th? Pshhh. And then just as soon as you get to look at that, it's gone. That's those people right there. Did y'all know the church has more of these people in it than any other type? They're like snap, crackle, pop. They're gone. They're, here they are. Boom. And it's like, we get all excited. Woo, we're going to shout. We're going to have a good time. We're going to sing it again, Sam. And here we go. You know, we just have a big time, and then all of a sudden, church is over. Where are we going now? Right? We're off to something else. And that's what he's talking about here. He's saying, look, they get excited. They attend church week after week after week. But listen to this. Their life never changes. 
You ever gone to church with somebody week after week after week for years, and yet their life never changed? I've, I've prayed that way many times as a pastor. I prayed, God, you know, uh, for years I, I've seen this happen. I said, God, how come some people come to church week in and week out, and I know they need God to touch them. God, I know they need you to touch them. I know they need a divine breakthrough. Why don't they ever get one? You know, and I thought about it, and he reminds me every time of this parable right here. He says, because some people can come in and they can look churchy and they can get a little church on on Sunday and maybe they can throw one in on Wednesday too. Y'all know it. We have church on Wednesday at 7. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. It's pretty good too, I think. We got youth ministry. Our youth ministry is just awesome. Lee and Robin, would y'all stand up? Let me embarrass Lee and Robin. Come on, Lee and Robin, right here. Look right here, somebody. You say, who is Lee and Robin? I don't know. I just met them. But I want you to meet No, I'm kidding. They working with our youth, man, student ministries, amped, and college and career. Man, if you anywhere between the ranges of, of 13 years old and, like, let's just say 40. No, I'm kidding. Uh, somewhere between 13 and, like, 25. Y'all need to be hooking with them. I mean, they got some good stuff going on, and they're great people, too. Every Wednesday night, man, they're having a good time over here. We have a great powerhouse ministry in the back. Did you know we now have a powerhouse 2.0? middle school program. If you got middle schoolers at, on Sunday mornings during the 11 o'clock service, not the 9, but during the 11 o'clock service, the powerhouse students meet next door over here. We got it going on, man. We want you to be into all that stuff. You know why? Because we want you to shout. We want you to have fun. We want you to connect with God. But here's the catch. We really don't want you to fizz. Amen. We want you to keep shouting. We want to do life together, right? We want you to come, into the, uh, come in and be a part of it and jump in. And the Bible says here, with joy, they received the word. But listen to this. They were never transformed. They got it. Man, wow, that was, a great, that was a great sermon. Or that was a great song. Or that was a great, wow. But you never were transformed. And that's what this is right here. And one of the reasons is because we're too busy. We get so busy, we don't have time for God. We jump on the bandwagon with whatever's going on, but God has a real hard time penetrating that bedrock of our soul, right? He has a real hard time. They're shallow, they're superficial. You know they say that you'll forget 95% of what I say today within 72 hours. That really hurts my feelings, by the way. That's why I give you notes. I want you to write down notes. I want you to write them down. I want you to hang on to it for at least 75 hours. You know, they say we'll forget all get that. What, what am I saying? Why do I tell you that? Because look, we got to let the seed, we got to let the seed sink down into the bedrock of our soul. There's got to be transformation of the heart. There's got to be something in there. In other words, I can't just be a hearer of the word. I got to be a doer of the word, right? Let's go do this thing. I won't just hear it. That's no fun. Let's hear it and then let's do it. And that's where i got to make time for God. The Bible said that they believe for a while, but then they forget it. it listen, it, it never takes any depth. They get off to a great start. This is one of the things that we see when people come to Christ as a new Christian. They'll, they'll come to Christ, and then, man, they're all jacked up. Man, they're like, woo, let's win the world. Right? And like three weeks later, they're sleeping in church. I have that effect on people. Right? And so, there, you know, it's like, well, what happened to all that enthusiasm? Well, we lost it along the way. Why? Because it never took root. Right? And that's what happens to us along the way. And we got to let that word get down in there. And I got to do that by allowing time. I want you to see this right here. I got to get it past the root and get in and get rooted with God. See this right here. If you don't have any roots, when the pressure's on, the heat's on, you're going to dry up. I want you to see, I want you to understand that. You got to have a spiritual root. That's what I like about the family of God. That's the whole benefit to the family of God, the church, the family of God. The benefit is, y'all know that God intends on us to do life together. You know what that means? That means when I'm hurting, you're there to help me. That means when you're hurting, I'm there to help you. That's what we're supposed to do. That's why you got to know somebody here. You got to come in and get to know somebody. So I've gone to that church for six months. I don't know nobody. You know why? You ain't talked to nobody. <laughs> Y'all okay? You know, the Bible says he who is friendly shows himself friendly will have some friends. There's a Hebrew word that should follow that. Duh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know if that's Hebrew or not. <laughs> right? <clears throat> well, we got to talk to somebody, get in the family of God and get some roots. Why? Because guess what? That heat's going to be on you sometime. Man, how many knows that's true? 
that heat's going to be on you. And when that heat comes in, and you know what happens? The devil is a master at picking people off that don't have any roots. You go to church, and all of a sudden, some of them disappear. Three weeks later, you'll go, where's so-and-so? I ain't seen them. Oh, they just got snuffed out by their roots, right? They were just a weed that got picked. Who picked them? The devil did. Something happened. Normally something petty. Well, so-and-so hurt my feelings. Seriously? Really? <laughs> so-and-so hurt your feelings? Get over it. Let's move on together. If I quit every time I had my feelings hurt, good Lord, I'd never be here Wednesday or half the Sundays. Right? We can't do that. All right? We got to keep moving. We got to get some roots. We got to get in contact with God every day. Can I, let, me, let me tell you something. Let me, let me give you something real profound. Are you ready? You, the answer here is not just coming to church. That's great. Coming to church is great, and I applaud you for doing that. We ought to do that every week, and, and I love that. But you know what the real thing here to grow roots? Growing roots, if you want to grow some deep roots, it's connecting with God through his word, and it's every day. Every day, reading his word, having that quiet time where you sit down and you read a little bit, you think about it, you talk to God about it, and then you let him talk to you about it. I've heard people say, I don't understand the word of God. Well, let me ask you something. What did you do to try to understand it? What did you do? Well, okay. Well, maybe you're reading a translation that you don't understand. Maybe you're reading a translation that you need Dr. Charles Stanley to interpret for you. I don't know. All right? If he's not readily available to come to your house, you might want to get a translation that you understand, right? And pick one that you can understand and you read it. And then what do you do? How about take a little time out, a little quiet time, talk to God about what you just read? How about praying before you read it and say, God, I'm fixing to read something that's way over my head, so I'm asking you to just light it up for me. I'm asking you to show me something. You know, isn't it amazing? Some of y'all can testify to this how you've read a certain passage in the Bible. Maybe you've read it 50 different times. And did you know you've got at least 10 or 12 different messages out of it at different times when you read it? You know why? Because the Bible, God says his word is alive. It is working magic inside of you. God is doing something powerful in you. And he knows how to pull certain things out to touch your greatest need when you read it. Now, if you're in the Old Testament reading about so-and-so who begot so-and-so who begot so-and-so who begot so-and-so, you might get a little bogged down. You can read about the begotten sometime when you want to, but sometimes when you're in trouble, you better go find something that's going to hit you between the eyes. Amen. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all okay? Amen. Some of y'all don't know how to take me. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I'm having fun. <laughs> get in contact with God every day. You know how we get stable? You know how we get stable through the Word of God? Do you know the easiest way, the quickest way to get stable, stability, is the Word of God? We got to get on the Word of God. That's what we got to have. We got to have some doctors start prescribing the Word of God. You need to go home, take a few doses of the Word of God. That's where our stability comes, right there. And the Word of God is historically one of the last things we go to, right? But I'm saying we got to get this in and get this root system down in our life. Number three, there's a third thing if you want God to speak to you, and that is we need to eliminate the distractions. I, I, look, I'm all over the place. You, are you like that? You don't have to admit that. I'm all over the place. I'm, I'm following the bouncing red ball. You know what I'm talking about? You bouncing one over here and someone bounces one over here. Whoa, I'm over here. You know, and we're distracted by a lot of stuff. You ever sit down and read, try to read the Bible and you're distracted? I mean, you ever told a story within a story? I do that every Sunday. I'll be telling Michelle something sometime. Right in the middle, I'll stop and tell her something different. She's like, where are we at now? You know, she has to keep me in line. But, you know, we get distractions, don't we? We get distracted in our life. And listen, if we're going to hear God speak, we've got to eliminate some distractions. We will often miss God's voice, listen, when we get distracted. And we don't have that time and that place where we shut off all the other things coming into our mind. It's like your computer. You ever had your computer just totally freeze on you? It just locked up. I mean, you can't do nothing but pull the plug. That's it. That's all you got, right? That's the, that's the way we are sometimes. We just get overloaded. And you're thinking all these thoughts, you got these concerns, you got your career, your bills you got to pay, you got a date coming up, you got test scores you got to think about, you got marriage issues, you got promotion, you got vacation, all these things bombarding your mind. And guess what? God can't get through to you because he doesn't have a channel to get to you, right? Verse 7, check this out. It said, here, here's the parable goes on. It says, other seed fell among thorns. You know what the thorns are? They're weeds. Other uh, seed fell among the weeds, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Now, look, weeds 
choke out the life of a plant, right? Nobody likes weed. You, got, you know what I'm talking about? Nobody likes weed. Nobody likes that weed, that lawn. You, got a, you have a sod or weed. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I got a weed lawn out here, right? Sometimes you get that way, the weed, and it just chokes out your yard, right? Look in verse 14. The seed that fell among the thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they don't mature. Now think about that. This is really better than having a closed mind, all right, because at least you are hearing the word and all of that. But then all of a sudden, as you go through life, there's some things that start to choke out. There are some distractions that start to choke out the word of God in your life. Television can choke out the word of God in your life. Philosophies of life that come from different angles can choke it out. Facebook can choke out. Come on, somebody, give me an amen. Amen. Facebook can get you, right? (laughs) I heard a story this week about Facebook, and I'm thinking to myself, when are the people in America going to wake up and realize that Facebook is not your friend? I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you, it's hilarious. I watch these people, and you can watch people that do the dumbest stuff. And it's the dumbest stuff. And they get busted left and right, left and right, left and right. You just want to start a campaign saying, wake up, dummy. Y'all okay? Y'all keep flirting with it. I'm just telling you. I'm just the messenger. It's okay. You know? But anyways, you know, they, they, these things are distractions. I mean, look, I, I went to, I, we went to a Georgia Force game last night. I went with Amp, man. Some of these guys, the leaders of Amp, we got together at a little fellowship. And I'm at the, I'm at the Georgia Force football arena game reading USA Today on my iPhone. Y'all follow that? I'm at the football game in the high point of entertainment reading USA Today paper. I'll be laying in bed at night, and I'll be sitting over there turned over like you're on my side. Michelle's like, what are you doing? Reading the paper. <laughs> it's on my iPhone. You know, I'm reading that. You know, I'm just watching. I'm getting scores, and I'm getting all the up-to-date bullets, and I'm getting what's going on in Iraq, and I'm getting what's happening in D.C., and what's happening over here. And by the way, Best Buy and Loganville's closing. Y'all know that? Wow. Got that on the iPhone. Y'all know that? May 12th. You better go shop today. Right? And you hear all that stuff. We got all these distractions coming in. Isn't that something? You ever drove down the road? You ever driven down the road on Highway 78 and start looking at how many people are on their cell phones while they're driving? (laughs) It's about every car. You ever notice that? And there's only a few of us professionals that can still text and drive. I'm just saying. But (laughs) but really, they're everywhere. (laughs) Walk through the airport. Everybody's got a cell phone or an iPad or something. I don't even have an iPad. I want an iPad. Everybody's got, I don't know what I'd do with one. I had a Motorola Zoom. Don't even know where it is now, you know? But I mean, all this stuff, we got stuff. And guess what all that stuff is? Distractions. Keeps us so busy. And all of a sudden, what he's trying to say, he's saying, look, some of the seed is going to fall on shallow soil, and it grows up, and there's no root, and it dies. But this third kind of soil, it it represents the preoccupied mind. Think about this with me. And and, and it it is better than the closed mind. But the Word of God gets into your mind, and it starts to grow. You're taking sermon notes, you're listening, you're reading the Word of God, and it starts to grow, and then all of a sudden, you miss your prayer time on Tuesday. And then guess what? Wednesday, you miss it again. And guess what? By Thursday, you've done wiped out everything you made a commitment on Sunday to do. You ever done that before? I raise my hand for all of us, okay? Because that's the way it works. And it starts to suffocate, and it sprouts, but there's no fruit. And God wants us to bear fruit. Did you know that? Galatians 5, fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, meekness, self-control. I want those things in my life. How about you? That's what God wants us to have. This is the character of Christ, and God wants us to have that fruit, but we don't have it. And why don't we have it? Because the weeds come in, the preoccupation with life, the trivia, the things that don't really matter. You know what? How do we look? How do we smell? How does everybody think we look? How does everybody think we smell? Which is as important as how you look and smell, right? Right? What's our image? Keep it up with our neighbors. You ever notice how much effort we put into keeping up with people that we don't even know? And if we did, we probably wouldn't even like them. Right? We do that. And the results are what? I got to go to work. I don't have any time left in my schedule. Where did the day go? The day just goes right by. Can't we testify to this? How fast that 24-hour period goes away? 
I mean, it just siphons right out. And I got all this stuff on my mind. I've got things to do, places to go, and people to see. And we are so busy. Here's the big warning right here. Listen, beware of the bareness of a busy life. Think about that with me. There is a difference, I want you to see this, between activity and productivity. Okay? And why is this so important? Because there's not one person in here, I don't care who you are, there's not one person in here that you don't have a busy life. And we have to evaluate that sometimes. We have to say, look, what is it on my schedule that I need to nix out? I mean, I reached a breaking point a couple of days ago where I'm thinking, man, I'm about dead. I can't take anymore. You ever feel that way? I mean, I'm, I can't take another stupid thing on my schedule, right? And I was at a melting point. I'm thinking, it's time to cut some stuff. What am I going to cut? Well, let's start cutting some of the stuff that's just activity and not necessarily productivity. Does that make sense? Let's cut some stuff so that I can have time to make sure, make sure I take care of the weeds that come up in my life. What are the weeds? Well, here's three of them you can write down if they're not on your notes. There's three types of weeds. The Bible says there are life's worries, life's riches, and life's pleasures. Let me tell you how that can be a weed. Life's worries, the problems and pressures of daily life. Come on, we have weeds in our life, don't we? The pressures of daily life. In this bad economy, in this tough time, and everybody, a lot of folks are struggling. Jobs, you know, a lot of people are looking for jobs and whatnot. Listen, I understand. Those pressures become so huge, it's hard to hear from God. Then the riches. Listen, you can be so busy making a living that you don't make a life. I mean, you can be burning the candle at both ends, right? And you can keep adding stuff to your benefit. I mean, adding stuff to your asset list. You can keep adding stuff. You can upgrade to a nicer house, better car, better this, better that. You can keep going, but you're not necessarily keep doing yourself any favors. Right? And those things are distractions. And then we have the pleasures. Right? The pleasures. That's where the recreation oftentimes takes a priority over worship. And they'll choke out God. Can I say that again just for fun? Sometimes pleasures will take priority over worship. What am I saying? You tell me I can't go on a vacation? No, I think, listen, whatever you get for vacation, you should take every bit of it. You get a chance to go to the beach, you should go to the beach. Right? But you don't stay home on Sunday morning to play on your slippy slide in the backyard. You do that after church. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> You're going to rent your little moonwalk, bouncy house. You do that after church. Yeah. Baby's birthday party. You take them to church first if you love them. Right? Chucky be okay. Their party can start at 2. Okay. You know there's some good things that will keep you from hearing from God? Did y'all know that even churchy things can keep you from hearing from God? I'm not saying the distractions are all negative things, things you've got to quit. There's some things that, that I'm encouraging you to do that could be a distraction for you. That's why you've got to pray and make sure you work out your schedule. And take, take advantage of that and put some, put some eyes on it and understand, God, what are you trying to tell me? Because, look, a weed is basically this. It's anything that I let rob my time with God. Anything. If I let it take time away from God, it's a weed. And I better deal with that weed or else it's going to be a problem. And guess what? I, have you ever thought of this? Did anybody ever go out and plant weeds in your yard? they natural, aren't they? They pop up everywhere. Did you go out there? Oh, I got a bag of weed. I'm going to power. You know, I know some of y'all did that, but them Monroe folks, I know. Yeah, <laughs> come on now. I ain't talking about that kind of weed now. Y'all focus right here, right here. We'll deal with that on a deliverance weekend, all right? If you do that, you better tithe on your first fruit. That's all I'm telling you. <laughs> I done stepped in it now. <laughs> the bad thing is all y'all relate to it. That's what's bad. That's what's bad right there. I don't know. But anyways, all right. Well, let's just assume for the sake of this sermon, you didn't plant no weed for this, all right? <laughs> that weed just pops up naturally, right? <laughs> 
Yeah, tell that to the officer. But officer, <laughs> it just popped up. Get in the car. All right. Did you know weed is a sign of neglect? Did you know that? When I neglect time with God, guess what's going to pop? They're naturally going to pop up. When I neglect time with God, they're going to start, you're going to have more excuses than you can handle. And these excuses are all going to what? Every one of them going to choke out my relationship with God. They're going to choke. I, I love this weather. I'm just telling you right now, if, I, if God heard my vote and my vote alone, this is the weather we would have from now till he comes back. No hotter, no colder. Trust me, because at 2.15 in the morning, it's cold. <laughs> but I don't plan to be out during those times, so this is perfect, right? You know, and I, I want to get out and do all kinds of stuff, and I think you ought to enjoy this earth that God gave you. But you know what? Don't let any entertainment, don't let anything out there take your eyes away from God. Enjoy. He said, look, everything out here, I made all this for your pleasure. Isn't that great? He's such a great God. But he never made it to be a distraction. He made it to enhance you. He made it to better you through the process. So I got I to gotta make sure that I cut out this stuff in my life. Here's the fifth and final one, and I'm going to wrap it up with this. Number five, cooperate with what God says to you. Cooperate with what he says to you. Listen, God speaks to the person who has decided in advance to do whatever he says. Don't you think about that. God will speak to the person who will make up their mind that says, God, I am going to be obedient to whatever you say to do. You want God to speak to you? Throw that one at him today before you leave. God, I'm going to commit myself. You tell me to do it, I'm going to do it. God is going to start using you like you've never been used before. Verse 15 said, the seed on good soils. Come on, somebody say good soil. Good. All right. Good soil. Seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and a good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. The good soil is a willing mind. James chapter 1 verse 22 says, do not merely listen to the word and to deceive yourself, but it says, do what it says. Do what it says. Let me close with this. Listen, God wants you to produce a crop. God won't you, if you will do what he's telling you to do? Did you know if you'll be obedient to what God tells you to do, God will not fail you? Did you know that? Did you know that? You have a promise today. God will not fail you. When you put it on your calendar, when you make God a top priority, when you do what the Bible says, to, listen, y'all know that some things in the Bible don't make a lick of sense. Come on, I'll just be honest with you. There are some things in the Bible, I don't understand for the life of me how I can make money and give 10% to God and I can have success with that. Doesn't make a lick of sense. But it works. I don't know how it works. I don't understand for the life of me how shutting myself off and going into a private place where I can pray and touch God when I should be out working another part-time job, how does that work? It's a trust matter. That's what it is. And God is just saying, look, you know what I'm looking for? God's saying, look, here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for somebody who is just willing to do what I tell them to do. If you own your own company, you got to hire about 100 people. Who do you want to hire? I want to hire people who do what I tell you to do. You show up at 7 o'clock. You take a 30-minute lunch break. And you leave at 10 o'clock tonight or whatever, you know. You're going to do what I tell you to do. That's what you're going to do. You go to that interview and say, well, I ain't going to do that. Well, you ain't going to work here. Right? That's what we say. We come in here, God, I need you to bless me. And God's like, yeah, I hear you. But I'm asking you to do a little something for me too. How about be faithful? How about do what I tell you to do? How about be obedient? Right? Oh, we got to do that too? God said, I want you to cooperate with me. Listen, if God did a brain scan in here today, open brain surgery, what mind would he find in all of us? What would he find? Would he find a closed mind? Would he find people here today that says, I'm fearful of what he might say? Maybe I'm dealing with pride. Maybe I'm dealing with bitterness. I don't know. God has a way of softening up hard ground. Y'all know that? You get too hard with God now, he's got a way of softening up your ground. He can send a monsoon rain. A lot of rain. He'll soften that ground up. He can work on you. You say, I got a closed heart today, a hardened heart today. All that. God can work on you. He'll fix you. It's not a problem. The question is, are you going to let him? 
Do you have a superficial mind? Is it easy for you to shout on Sunday, but then you, you struggle Monday through Saturday? Well, where are you in all this thing? You know what I'm talking about? Maybe you're a believer and you just haven't got any depth. You know? We, we need to get back. Let me tell you something. I got, I got something that I believe is, is absolutely a prophetic word for America today. Listen. The answer to our country, the answer to this world, the answer to Loganville is not another political arena, another political event. It is the church of the living God waking up and being the church. Solid. Not the fake church. Not the fake and bake. That's what I call them, the fake and bake. Not the crazy Fruit Loop people. Every church has Fruit Loops in it. Right? A few lucky charms. Right? You know what God's looking for? I'm just looking for people to be obedient. You know what you can be today? You may have a past as sketchy as I don't know what. But all you got to do is say, God, I want to be obedient to you. And you know what? God's saying, man, that's what I like right there. We can change a country with that right there. We can change a nation with that faith right there. Isn't that incredible? Think about this. Next time you watch CNN, Fox News, whatever your news of choice is, think about this. You're the answer to this thing turning around. Men and women of faith. Men and women who aren't afraid to let that seed get into their spirit and take root and say, God, you speak to me and whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. I ain't scared. I'm going to do it. Wouldn't that be great? Just think, what is God waiting to do through you when you thought God didn't even know you existed? Who's he going to touch through you? Think about it. You sitting here today, you listen to me, and you're thinking, man, God ain't going to use me for nothing. I'm just a, I'm the poster child for dysfunction. Maybe that's what you're thinking. I got news for you. You're wrong. What does God want to do to transform this community, your community, and this nation, and through you? I'm here to tell you today big stuff. He wants to do big stuff. He wants to talk to you. Now, I love the fact that God speaks through preachers sometimes. I love the fact that you can listen to certain CDs and music and He can speak to you that way. I love the fact that there are men and women out there that hear from God and they'll come tell you, well, this is what thus saith the Lord. I'm cool with that too. But I sure hope you leave here today knowing that God wants to speak to you directly. Because the best person to hear it is you. I don't want God to tell me my blessings through somebody else. I want him to tell me. And I can tell you, listen to this. God wants to take your brokenness. and He wants to make something beautiful out of it. Sometimes I feel like I've worked 44 years just breaking things, destroying things, ruining things. You ever feel that way? And God says, look, I want to take your brokenness and I want to make something beautiful out of it. Say, I'm, see, you don't know my past. I've got, a, I've got two or three or four or five divorces. I've got three, four, five, six bankruptcies. I, I used to be in prison. I used to save it. Who cares? It's totally irrelevant in this house. You know why? Because it's irrelevant with him. You don't have a bad enough past that's put you on the exempt skid row. He says, I love you. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and tell you now, the uglier your past is, you better look out for this. He's probably going to use you more than anybody else. You know why? Because God specializes in taking brokenness and pouring it out to save thousands. That's what he wants to do. What is God waiting to do today? Who will listen to him? Who wants to know what God wants to do? I hope you do. Can we stand together today? And I'm going to close this service. Father, I love you so much. I love these people so much. I thank you for this beautiful congregation. Lord, you want to speak to us today. And I pray for every person here right now that you will help me close this service in a way that would be fitting to you today and would be pleasing to you. 
with every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm going to ask you two questions today. The first question is the single most important question you'll ever hear in all your life. And that is this. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you accepted Him? Because He loves you so much. He is so impressed with you. He loves you. He wants a relationship with you. You might have come in here thinking you're just totally shipwrecked. And your life is totally ruined. But He looks at you and says, I love you so much. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I died for you that you might live. Come on, that's so awesome today. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I don't know Jesus Christ. Whether you're in this room or you're watching by internet right now, I want to give you that opportunity. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you to the front of this church. But right now, the very first order of business, I want to know if you need to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You want to pray to accept Him today. But right where you stand, I want you to lift your hand high. And I want you to say, pray for me today. I want Jesus to come into my life. Is there anybody, anybody, anybody? God bless you. I, I was just told there's one by internet that has responded this morning that wants to meet Jesus Christ. We have a question on there. There's somebody already responded online. Is there anyone else? You say, I want Jesus Christ to come into my life today. Anyone else? Lift your hand high today. I want to see you. I don't want to miss you. God bless you in the back. God bless you. There's two. There's three. God bless you. You can put your hand back down. Anybody else? I see three people. Two hands here and one on the internet. Is there anyone else? I need Jesus. Don't miss me, Pastor. Don't miss me. I want Jesus to come into my life today. Is there anybody else quickly? Second question I have for you today is this. You'll say, I, I want to be, I want to hear from God. I, I've not been creating a playing field where I can hear from God. And I know, and I want to ask Him to forgive me for that. And I want to walk out of here today making a fresh commitment that I'm going to do everything in my power to cultivate an open mind, to hear from Him, to eliminate the distractions. I want to, I want to be willing to do whatever He says to me. If that's you, would you lift your hand high right now? Hands are going up all over this room. I thank you. Father, I thank you for those who just lifted their hands. They're, the whole room, the hands were up everywhere. Men and women, boys and girls that have said, I want you, God, to help me. I, I ask you to forgive me for the distractions that take me away from hearing your word and to listening to you, hearing your voice. God, today, we make a fresh commitment right now. I ask you, God, to touch my life that when I walk out of here, I'm going to do everything in my power to be obedient to you that I can hear your voice. I thank you that you want to speak to me directly. I thank you that you, want, that you love me so much you want to do that. That is so awesome. And I praise you. Have your way with me, Lord, and speak to me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, there are three people who said, I want Jesus Christ. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Two in this room and one watching by the internet. Y'all didn't know we had that feature, did you? That's pretty cool. That We got some great technical brains back there. I'm just telling you right now. I want you to think, let me just tell you how important every position in this church is. If it wasn't for Chris Luss sitting back there saying, hey, I got an idea, Pastor. When you start to give the altar call, is it okay with you if I put a question on the internet? Do you want to pray to accept Christ? And if somebody responds, I wave at you. And I'm thinking, man, that's brilliant. Did you know, Chris, somebody's going to heaven today because of you. And Jesus, of course. That's awesome. That's how ministry works, by the way. Doesn't matter if you're in the nursery, parking lot, doesn't matter where you go. Everybody in heaven is going to be there because somebody loved them enough to serve. Isn't that awesome? There's three people today that's going to meet Jesus Christ. That's so awesome as a personal Savior right now in this service. And I want us all to pray. It's a family deal here, all right? I want us all to pray. It's a real simple prayer. He says, if we'll believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that He is Lord, then guess what? That simple, we will be saved today. Would you pray this simple prayer with me today? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I come before you now. Please forgive me of my sins. I want you today to be the Lord of my life. I open my heart to you. I invite you to be my Lord. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. Amen and amen. Come on, let's celebrate with all of heaven. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Isn't that awesome? Man, that's awesome stuff. Good stuff. Man, that's good stuff. I'm glad I wore a suit today. I was feeling froggy today. Somebody saw me in the back. I, someone saw me in the back and said, you must be preaching on money. <laughs> no. No. All my jeans were dirty. How many of y'all know God is so good? Isn't that awesome? He loves you. He loves you. You know, listen, we got a really good church. I'm just telling you. We got a really good church. Y'all seeing half of it right here. The other half will be here at 11 o'clock. You're seeing half of it. God is doing some big stuff. Big stuff. And I really hope, let, let me go back to this. Those who have an ear, let them hear. I really hope you're praying. Really hope you're praying about what God's wanting to do through this church because there's a lot of average people like me and you that God's bringing together for such a time as this so that we can see thousands of people come to Christ. Very important. Now, ladies, I'm, I'm going to have Jerry come and he's going to, pray over our offering. You know, at Christ Church, we don't pass an offering plate. We got boxes around the building. You give your tithes and offerings. You don't give because a preacher tells you to give. You give because you're being obedient to the Lord. Because did you know that God knows every need you have? Did you know that God knows every need the church has? And did you know that you never have to beg for God to meet your needs? He's going to take care of us. When we all do what we're supposed to do, He takes care of the church and He takes care of you. But I'll, before Jerry comes and prays over our offering. I believe in for miracles financially over your home. But ladies, in particular, I talked to the men earlier. Ladies, there's a great event getting ready to come up around Mother's Day. I think it's a mother's daughter banquet. I don't know much about it, but right back in that corner, there's a table. And I hope you'll sign up. It's going to be a huge event this year. And the space is going to get tight. So I hope you'll be the, some of the first to sign up. God bless you. I love you so much. Jerry, come. Amen. Amen. I want to just let you know how much this is an awesome honor to be able to pray over your giving. My goodness. The he, Troy has already mentioned the fact that blessing is going to come over your finances. And it's just my honor to agree with Troy, to agree with God that he will bless you beyond what you can ask or think. It says in 2 Corinthians 9 that he God loves a cheerful giver. When he says he loves you, that means he has everything at his disposal. All of heaven, all of the angels, all of the treasures in heaven focused at right at you because you are a cheerful giver. So let's pray and agree with God that you are blessed because of your giving. Dear Heavenly Father, I give you the praise and glory today. We worship you as the King and the Lord of our life. We hand you our love, our, our joy cheerfully to you. Receive our tithes and offerings to you in our cheerful heart. We receive the blessing that you've given us, that you've promised us. We receive it right now in the name of Jesus. We ask you to bless each and every one that's here each and every one that's viewing by the internet we pray that you bless protect give us the hearing that we need to hear your voice that we may be obedient to every word that you say bless us today we praise you in jesus name we pray amen thanks for coming have a wonderful day